Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, how's everyone doing? Um, I, am, I am actually super excited to be here, but I've also had very little sleep, so it might not show through. But uh, yeah. Um, thanks for coming, and thanks to uh, JS Confu for inviting me, and thanks to everyone that has made this event really awesome. It's uh, super great to be here. And I wanted to kind of just take a quick moment to uh, say, like, happy anniversary, 10th uh, year of JS Confu. Super exciting, but also a little bit sad since they're going to take a little break. Um, but let's stay positive and be excited about the 10th year here. And, and I'm really excited to see what happens next. There are some amazing people that are... Uh, involved in this whole effort, so I look forward to seeing what they, what they bring next. But also, happy birthday to Node. I don't know if everyone knows that this is 10 years of Node. Woo! Woo! Um, and Ryan uh, introduced Node here at, at JS Confu in 2009. Um, shout out to Jen Schiffer, 2009. Uh, Happy belated birthday from IOJS. Eh? Eh? Got that one in there. I couldn't find the Node.js tweet that said happy birthday, so I just went with this one. So I am here to talk to you about promises in Node Core, uh, the core APIs in Node, and what state they are in, in terms of being promisified. And I want to start with a little disclaimer. I will... Um, try to make as few puns as possible. Actually, I'm, I'm going for zero, and, and technically I don't think this is a pun, so if you are keeping track, mark it zero, Donnie. Um, I'm Giuseppe. Uh, my little Twitter handle's down there, but you can barely see it, see it, but if you search, you'll find me. I'm an open source engineer. Um, I have the great fortune of being paid to work on open source um, exclusively, pretty much and uh, technically and in the community and as a part of the foundation. Why does my phone keep buzzing? I, I told you, leave me alone. Okay, it's not doing it. Anyway, uh, so I'm super fortunate and it's great and I love it. I, I am, work for a lovely company called IBM. We uh, make typewriters and we have, a, we have a cloud but it's really just someone else's computer so don't be fooled. Uh, not to be confused with Hal, so, you know, IBM. This is my lovely family. <laughs> uh, this is also my lovely family. This is what I do in my spare time. Uh, it's Pat and Stella, my band, Least Best Beast. This is what uh, I really enjoy doing. I play in another band. That's also Stella in the background. That's me up there as well in the back. And I, I, I occasionally uh, play in a Misfits cover band. So. Funny story, all of this was to lead up to, you know, karaoke tonight, but then I realized that was, my talk is after official karaoke, so. Uh, however, I am always open for karaoke, so if anyone wants to go, I'm here all week for the TC39 meetings, ping me on, my DMs are open, let's go do karaoke. All right, cool. So I digress, which I do often, if you know me. I wanted to just quickly share a little bit of personal context around, uh, around promises. I've worked at a company called the New York Times um, a few years ago, and pretty much everywhere I've worked for the last, I mean, I think almost every job I've ever had, I've kind of done some form of developer advocacy uh, informally or, or formally. And we had, uh, I started this weekly JavaScript thing, which I, I managed to do every single week uh, largely sourced by internal folks. Uh, luckily at the times we had so many great people like Jeremy Ashkenis and David Nolan and uh, Mike Bostock and you know, lots of great people. Um, but occasionally I would have some outside folks come in and talk to us about cool stuff. So this is in like 2012, 2013. Um, Tom Hughes Croucher came in. 
uh, Rebecca Murphy, uh, Spike came by, and my old friend Dominic was there too. So uh, Tom talked about sockets and streams in Node. What's the date on this again? Yeah, 2012. And uh, so, I mean, you know, Node was around for a few years. But it was still pretty new, pretty exciting, and, and the hockey stick had not really happened yet. Uh, Rebecca came, and we had kind of an informal discussion, uh, you know, group discussion. This is one of the things she talked about. Shout out to, to Yakewery. I mean, does anyone know Yakewery? All right. Do some research. It's fantastic. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, Spike came and talked to us about Render, which was this really cool isomorphic framework where you could write backbone, uh, uh, backbone app that would be front end and back end with the same code. It was kind of revolutionary at the time. It was really cool. And Dominic came in to talk to us about this little spec he was working on. And at the time, there were a few um, libraries that were in, uh, implementing promises, but everybody kind of had their own flavor. And so Dominic was working on, you know, developing uh, a spec that would be something that the language could implement. And, and fortunately, Dominic continues to do amazing work in the, uh, the spec space. So thank you, Dominic. It was also a great opportunity for me to say that I wrote for the New York Times, which is pretty cool. And uh, so I talked about, you know, callback hell in, in JavaScript and how we're working on it uh, using, you know, the promises of uh, async flow. And this looks bad, but it's not actually that bad because it's fairly, like, linear. But when you're nesting asynchronous flow in a variety of ways, it can get really, really, really painful and hard to debug. And, you know, I think it was one of the uh, quiz questions last night, you know, which of these async functions are going to end first? And, if I'm not mistaken, almost everyone got, got it wrong. Then I went to work for a company called Behance, which was a lot of fun. And there are some really smart people there. And, and pretty much everything that we did there was promise-based. And it kind of blew my mind for a few weeks or months or something. But once I got the hang of it and writing all my code uh, uh, using promises, uh, almost all my code, uh, it was just a fantastic way to, to, to control your async flow. And you may know that Ryan was here last year talking about uh, regrets in Node. And one of the key things he talked about was not sticking with promises. And granted, this is really early on, 2009 to 2010. Uh, he removed them in February. <clears throat> and as he says in the talk, you know, maybe it's okay that, that they, they didn't remain in promises because not having him in the, the implementation in there allowed the community to kind of work through uh, what might be the best implementation. So there were a variety of libraries, like I said before, uh, Q and RSVP that were doing their own implementations of, uh, of promises. And it allowed the community to find the right abstraction and we could kind of go from there. And it's a, it's a good model, I think, that we've you know, used time and again in, in JavaScript. Um, but as he said, Node's many async APIs are aging pretty badly. And uh, this is definitely a pain point in uh, writing Node, which has a lot of callback-based APIs. Obviously, async uh, uh, is at the core. So one tip if you uh, are really trying to get your talk accepted at a conference is to reference one of the organizers in your talk proposal. Um, I don't know if it worked or not, but I'm here in front of you now. So one of those references is to this tweet. And uh, it really was kind of funny but sad. Uh, Lol at Node.js core modules for still using the callback pattern. I mean, this is in November. And I have this bad habit of, uh, maybe it's a good habit, actually, of finding something interesting uh, that I would like to hear a talk about and then submitting it, whether I know a lot about it or not. But um, this was really interesting to me. And so I submitted a talk about how, you know, where, where we are and um, where we're trying to get to and how you may be able to help. And fortunately for me, it got accepted. And so here we are. So one of the responses is Miles, who is uh, super active in, in the node space and a variety of spaces. Um, I love Miles. And he shares with us that the FS 
API already has uh, an experimental uh, promise implementation. And this is one of the problems. It's not maybe the prettiest, uh, because we needed to figure out how to uh, namespace, essentially, uh, promise implementations of APIs. But he points this out, and people are pretty excited about it. And he shares that, you know, unfortunately, there are only two that were implemented at the time in, in late November. And it's FS and, and DNS, and they're uh, experimental. Now, there are some puns on these slides, but I did not make them, so I, don't, I still don't think they count. Keep it zero, Donnie. Um, and then it was also pointed out that there is a utility in the framework that you can basically uh, wrap any callback-based uh, node API using util.promiseify. And as is stated there, it's still, you know, still a little horrible, but it, it gets us somewhere. So why, why was it taken out and then has not been like just brought back uh, into Node? And this was something uh, Matteo said to me a couple of days ago at the OpenJS uh, Collaborator Summit, which happened just before JSConf, is that it's an insanely hard problem that's been there forever and that we've never really been able to find a, a great way to solve and, and find consensus on what the implementation is for a variety of reasons. So the big problem is that promises were primarily uh, designed for browsers. And so if you have uh, you know, something go wrong in your promise in a browser uh, for a user, you're only affecting one user, you know, one tab. They might not even notice. They may think, why is my uh, Facebook reply not, not showing up or something, and if they view the console, they may see some sort of error, but it, it probably doesn't even affect them that much uh, in most cases. But if something happens on the server, it could bring the whole server down, likely will, and that affects obviously way more than, than one user, right? So this is uh, uh, one of the big problems, the challenges that we face with promises in Node Core. And here's an example. So we, we had a, a session at the Collab Summit um, on this very topic, and we kind of worked through some of these, these things um, as a group. And uh, this is pretty basic pseudocode, but this, the, the sum function call will, anything you know, beyond that resolve will essentially get swallowed. And so you could have code like this and a bunch of code after that, but if you're uh, promise is resolved, all of that code is essentially, it's run, but if you have any errors, you have like very little, I think no way of really seeing what's going on there. So your app may come down, you may have all sorts of problems, but you may never know that that's the, that's the issue. Um, and then this is uh, another example. Uh, essentially, if you have a promise that never resolves and the event loop finishes all of the things that it needs to do, and you just have this promise kind of hanging out out there, you don't really know that, that, that that's there because it never resolves and it's, it's sort of invisible as well. So essentially this is all a debugging nightmare, right? But the, 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 the great news is that there, there has been uh, progress and things are happening. Uh, there's a zero-cost async stack traces were, were shipped uh, not that long ago. And so that, that can help us get some insight into uh, to some of these issues. But here's another big one, right? So uh, how do you promise event emitters that don't resolve once? They, they may have uh, multiple uh, events coming back, right? So what do we do there? Um, well... The, and, 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 you know, as I said, there are multiple responses. The tricky part, too, is that some of the key things, the, the key uh, core APIs use a event emitter uh, under the hood, right? So this is a daunting problem. Well, the good news is events.once, that one's kind of easy to solve, right? And that one um, is, is already, uh, I, don't know, I can't remember if there's a PR. It may have already landed in, in, um, in core. Uh, but events.on needs, needs an async iterator. This talk actually has been evolving like minute by minute, hour by hour. Uh, we had the, the, the Collab Summit 
uh, Thursday and Friday of last week, and this uh, tweet came through yesterday morning. So I'm like continually updating these slides. So, and they're also my talk notes. So if they come up and, and I haven't actually implemented a slide, don't don't blame me. I'm I'm working on it. But the great news is uh, there's a PR open. Uh, by Matteo to, um, to implement async uh, iterator for, for the event emitter. So stuff is happening. It's really, really exciting. Sometimes this is thrown up as a bit of a roadblock. And, uh, I, you know, obviously we do need to be considered, uh, considering performance in the implementations that we're making, but I think we need to make sure we balance them between um, the developer experience and, and, and delivering on what is, uh, you know, a modern interface for, uh, for a, a modern platform, right? So, like I'm kind of getting at, the good news is that things are getting better. And progress is being made on a on a, a very ongoing basis. Um, some APIs are already done, as I mentioned, FS and DNS uh, events. Dot once there there are a few others that are already uh, implemented. Some PRs are open, like the one we just looked at for a second there. Uh, I have one that I'm uh, going to open over the next few days. That's around crypto. So things, things are, are definitely happening. And other development is in progress. And when I say that, I mean this is from November of that tweet uh, about LOL at Node Core to now, there has been uh, a real swell of, of activity. And especially with the, the summit session that we had, like the people are focused on this. Uh, when when we asked for volunteers, there were you know six or seven people that that raised their hands, and I'm trying to think about this too from like a something of a project management standpoint and helping list out the APIs, see what state they're in. Uh, I'll I'll be opening some issues soon to uh, catalog what what APIs uh, still need to be done, and we can start to really track this uh, this effort in a holistic fashion. So. We try to do everything in, in, in Node in, out in the open, you know, through issues and comments and PRs and such. And so this is a, an issue in the summit uh, repo for the, the recent Berlin summit. And so as you can see here, one of the topics that we talked about was um, uh, unhandled rejections. So when, um, like I showed earlier, if you resolve your promise and you have a bunch of other stuff happen and you get exceptions, you know, how can we uh, handle that and, and surface these errors so that you know where they're coming from. Uh, we have a survey that we're working through uh, if, if, if people are interested in. Um, we're also, it's scroll, if I were able to scroll down on the screenshot, there's a link to a user feedback survey that I've been trying to get over the finish line that would be more for uh, end users, what their experiences are, how they're managing promises, and, and give us some more insight into uh, what, what we may want to be considering in, in further development here. And then that bottom link there is a list of uh, all the APIs and, and some notes on, on the current state of things. Uh, so as I mentioned, there's a, a, a survey primarily focused for implementers as to what we think would be the, the best way to handle these, these uh, rejections. Uh, this is that list of the APIs that I mentioned. There are only 50 of them, and a, a bunch of them are not relevant. Some of them are already done, but you know we're, we're we're trying to get a real handle on the overall effort. But like I said, the the groundswell within the project is real. People are focused on this. Uh, it's taken a little bit of time to get there, but we have PRs open. Uh, there's there's work being done, and and it's 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 actually kind of exciting to think that we may have some more modern imp, uh, interfaces for these core APIs. So the, the, the kind of call to action here, too, is if you are at all interested, we always welcome people to get involved. I know sometimes uh, working on Node Core can be a little daunting, but it's, it's not that bad. You should uh, talk to any of us folks who are involved in it, uh, Joy E before and uh, Feder and stuff. You know, any of the folks that are around here that are involved would be happy to, uh, to share with you. It is a strategic initiative uh, for the, the Technical Steering Committee, the TSC. Uh, Mateo is, is the champion 
Um, I'm, I'm trying to help along with Ruben to uh, Ruben Bridgewater to, to, to kind of spearhead some of these things. Uh, Miles has, has done some work. I mean, everybody's doing uh, work on this. Benjamin uh, is involved. There's a lot of people who are focused on it now, which is exciting. Uh, this is one of those slides that, that I should have updated, but I haven't actually filed that initiative PR yet. So once I do, next to Mateo's name, there will be a link right there that would be the issue that would catalog uh, where we are. And I promise you that we will resolve this problem. <laughs> All right? Yeah.